Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome to Galvanic Software Recovery Unit uh, application training session. Uh, my name is Clarissa, and I'm the Senior Portfolio Manager with uh, Galvanic Applied Sciences. Today, I'm going to provide a quick overview about TL Guest Reading Unit applications. This table basically lists um, some of the main applications in the SRU. We will talk about the TLS reading units or the TGTUs. That refers to a specific process after the SRU to convert the tail gas to H2S so that it can be sent back to the SRU again as the feed for producing more and more elemental sulfur. The most typical TGTU uh, process is SCOT, which is the shell cloth off gas treatment. It is an aiming based treating unit, which includes a reduction reactor to basically reduce all of the sulfur components in the TL gas to H2S by reacting them with H2 or hydrogen in the presence of Como catalyst. Um, the gas is then sent to a quench tower and from there to an amine absorb, uh, absorber tower so that this H2S is absorbed with the amine. The sweet gas leaves the tower at the amine absorber overhead, and that has a less H2S, as less amount of H2S as possible. The amine that uh, includes that high level of H2S then goes to a regenerator unit that regenerates the amine and uh, separated H2S and goes back all the way to the class process um, and asks for you to further convert to that elemental sulfur. So this here is just a list of some technologies being used for that recovery of the H2S and the amine absorber uh, units and some other technologies basically that exist for this cleaning process. All right, so here, uh, what we see here is basically um, a diagram that shows how this uh, tail gas um, treating unit, or is, uh, that's an ex Scott example, uh, works again back to the quench tower as well as the Scott absorber and how the whole regeneration happens in, in the systems and then this, in this unit. Um, so in terms of the applications, uh, basically what happens here is that uh, there are different points in the TGTU to analyze. So one of the popular points to measure H2S is at the outlet of the quench tower. So H2S is basically measured here at the quench tower overhead for the material balance purposes in the SRU and also to quantify the amine load. So it is typically in the range of uh, 0 to 5%. And the analyzer uh, we use here for this measurement is, again, a UV-based analyzer. It's called the FPA 4100 um, uh, that analyzes H2S accurately at this point. The overhead of the amine absorber a unit is uh, basically lean, um, includes the lean um, H2S that is important also to analyze before sending it to the incinerator as it can uh, contribute to emission, obviously. So measuring H2S uh, at the amine absorber overhead can provide a good information about the amine absorber uh, efficiency. So the amine efficiency is low if too much H2S is released, and it is high if we see much lower amount of the H2S here. So basically, um, these are two of the main applications here that can be measured with this analyzer. So here for the amine absorber, we use the ICLIS. It's a laser-based technology. Uh, there are more applications here as well in the TGTU. And at this point, I'm going to pass it on to Steve, who will discuss more applications in the tail gas Trading units. Steve? Thank you, Parissa. Hi, guys. My name is Steve Studelsky. I'm the platform manager for the liquid analyzers here at Galvanic. Now we're going to talk about the amine sweetening process in the tail gas treater unit. Here we have a detailed flow diagram highlighting the amine sweetening process. Various amines are used depending on the application, such as methyl diethanolamine. Fresher lean amine becomes rich after it absorbs H2S from sour gas in the absorber. 
Rich amine continues to the regenerator where it strips off the H2S. The newly lean amine is pumped back to the absorber and the cycle continues. When amine, a base, reacts with H2S and acid, the reaction creates a salt or anion. The reaction efficiency is based on maintaining Proctor chemistry conditions. Amine is replenished in order to ensure optimal alkaline conditions. Determining when to replenish amine is based on the amine strength or buffer capacity. If the pH drops too much, H2S removal becomes inefficient and side reactions can occur. Side reactions occur when the amine falls out of pH specification. This causes the formation of various heat stable salts to form, which remain in solution. Heat stable salts can form when there are issues with makeup water or treated streams. This impacts the process by accelerating corrosion, causing plumbing and foaming. Heat stable salts also cause incorrectly overestimating amine strength during analysis. The best way to measure is using potentiometric acid base titration with a pH electrode. This allows you to truly determine the buffer capacity and correctly adjust dosing as needed. Inline pH sensors, sensors are often used as a proxy for monitoring amine strength. However, pH is a poor dosing control strategy since it only determines acid or base. Solely relying on pH leads to unexpected swings and the probes can easily follow. The most important measurement for amine sweetening is the amine strength. If the amine value is too high or too low, upsets occur, which negatively impacts the process. Replenishing amine is expensive, so operators want to recycle the amine as long as possible. Other than amine strength, there are other components that should be monitored. Physical property changes, such as color, can also indicate process upsets. High metallic content or suspended solids accelerates corrosion. Heat stable salts form side reactions and can also cause problems. Online wet chemistry analyzers can be used to monitor the liquid amine chemistry. Multi-parameter systems measure both amine strength and H2S loading. Multi-stream systems can monitor both lean and rich streams. Several other compounds can be measured utilizing different analyzer configurations. Galvanics AccuSeries Analyzer monitors amine following an approved ASTM method. Our analysis sequence guarantees plus or minus 2% of full-scale accuracy and repeatability. This is our third generation wet chemistry analyzer, marking 30 years monitoring amine. Our robust sampling system and sample conditioning minimizes maintenance. Online turbidimeters and photometers can measure suspended solids and color. Configurations are available to monitor suspended solids and color using one transmitter. Online viscometers can measure viscosity. These physical properties can be useful indicators for process efficiency. Galvanics Monotech line of analyzers monitors both suspended solids and colors. We use a dual wavelength measure for color, which eliminates turbidity interferences. We use a near infrared method for TSS, which can handle solids up to percent levels. Galvanics Viscosite uses a torsional oscillation method to measure viscosity. All these methods guarantee plus or minus 2% performance. Thank you, and now I'll hand things back over to Parissa. Galvani can support this application with a high measurement certainty due to 40 years of field-proven experience in the SRU and TGTUs. So Galvanic offers uh, basically a rapid return on investment to optimize the air demand control, um, increase the SRU on online time, as well as minimizing uh, emissions, and most importantly, provide a high level of operate, um, operation as well as the plant safety in general, which is the number one when working in the SRUs. Please feel free to reach out if you have any specific question, if you would like to discuss any application or opportunity. With that, um, I would like to thank you all on behalf of myself, Steve, uh, and the entire Galvanic team. Thank you again, everybody, and have a great time.